And welcome to Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Thanks for joining us here on Likeable Science, where we try to show that science is all around us, everywhere, every day, part of our lives. With me today is Susan Scott. Welcome, Susan. Thank you. Susan's back here on this must be, I think, your third appearance here. So. And uh, talking about her new book, Hawaii's White Turns, a beautiful book about a beautiful animal. So uh, Susan is an amazing person, uh, author of this and what, seven other books or something, I think? Eight. Eight other books, okay. <laughs> uh, biologist, volunteer for various uh, biological projects out in the Hawaiian, Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Uh, writes a weekly column that you may have seen, the Ocean Watch column. Um, nine books, yeah. Uh, lectures on marine biology. Uh, registered nurse. A person of many talents, <laughs> obviously. So uh, maybe you can tell us sort of what piqued your interest in these, uh, in, in these animals? Well, uh, I was working as a volunteer for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in 2003, and so I was working at Kern Island in French Frigate Shoals, which now does not have any more biologists because a cyclone knocked down all the buildings a couple years ago. But uh, my job there, at, I was assigned the, the white turns, to monitor the white turns, to count the eggs, and count the chicks, and see uh, how long it took to hatch. And so... One of my jobs was to go around and, and, and look at who was laying eggs. And so, but in my room, we were in a Coast Guard barracks. There were white terns in the, in the windowsill. I could see them from my room. So I thought every day there, I could see them every hour. And so I walked around the outside. And the first picture will show you what I saw. It was an amazing thing <laughs> that the white terns' parents love those windowsills. Nice. And so... The problem was they, they, they would lay an egg, and the, the windowsill was just a, a bit slanted for the water, to right. drain the water off. And so they would sit on the egg, and nine times out of ten, they would just roll off onto the ground and break. Well, a female can lay up to six eggs, one at a time. They only raise one chick at a time. And so uh, she would lay again, and it would happen. Sometimes they'd incubate them for a couple weeks, and so there'd be a half-formed chick uh, struggling, you know, broken. Mm -hmm. and. It, so one day the refuge manager and all of us felt really terrible sure, about that. Sure. So he went around with a chisel and a hammer and he, and he chiseled out little indentations in each windowsill around our room, <laughs> around the whole barracks. And so the chicks did much better after that. Right. And they had a much higher um, success fledging rate there mm -hmm. than in other parts of the world, because oh. I think because of that. Excellent. And that actually is, is an interesting thing about these birds, right? These birds have really adopted, or adapted, I should say, to, to human habitations. They've adopted yes. human buildings yeah. as nesting sites. Yes, they have. Yeah. And, they, and that's one of the great things along with our colea, our plovers, and um, you know, some other animals that are adapting to people. And I think in this era of our planet, it, the ones that adapt to human things are going to do much better. Yeah, their advantage. Right, and so that's what happened with, with the white terns is in 1961 there was one one pair that a birder found on an egg in, near Cocoa Head. And so uh, over the years they sort of expanded from, that was out near Cocoa Head, not into Waikai but more into um, Kepulani Park. And so people were watching them and they did some studies in the 80s and now we're up to, uh, the last count was 2300. And they are only nesting in, they don't, they don't actually build a nest. So I right. say nest, right. you know, not really a nest, right. but they breed in um, between Hawaii Kai and Hickam Air Force Base. Oh. And, and then nowhere else. They've not come over to the Windward Side mm -hmm. or any other parts. And so no one really knows if they are chicks that have fledged and are coming back to breed where they were born or if there's other birds coming from yeah, other places. Recruited recruiting. Because yeah. the species is... Um, indigenous to, to the world in right. the tropics. But, but this is the only place where they've urbanized, right? The only like, where, city, where they've, where they've yeah, settled in. We're the only city that yeah. has them. And they're our official bird. They were made the official bird of Honolulu in 2007. Yeah, by, excellent. By and, the and they're beautiful. Yeah, they're know. beautiful. Yeah. And, they're, and since they don't have a nest, um, it's really easy to see them. So they, uh, they, you can go to International Marketplace. Picture, picture here? And um, oh, okay, yes. th there's eight pairs in there right now, really? one of the researchers told me. Huh. And so you can go up the escalators there. I don't know if you've been there yeah. late, lately, but you can see them at different levels. Oh, and the nice thing is you can just look eye to eye, and the chicks aren't in a, the, the one chick that the parent, two parents are raising aren't in a nest. Huh. So they're out 
in the open sitting on a branch. And one of the reasons the researchers think they like Honolulu so much is because we have about 250,000 uh, trees, most, almost all introduced species in mm -hmm. Honolulu, and they're constantly being trimmed. And so those trimming scar, those trimming leaves little round scars, and it's a perfect place to lay an egg at, that won't roll off. As are sort of you know uh, window right. sills and, and window ledges. sills and ledges mm -hmm. and so yeah throughout the book we have pictures of uh, birds laying eggs in weird places right, but right. the great thing is people can just look out their office window or look out their condominium window and see watch a parent raise a chick and I think the next picture has a good picture that I took from the international marketplace and that's just standing uh -huh. on the upper ledge and and one parent was there and another one came in with a fish. And that's the other cool thing about these birds is they, they don't um, swallow the fish and regurgitate it like right. a lot of birds, but they feed them the whole fish. And so researchers can see what the species are, are fish because we can take those pictures. Right. You talk in here about uh, they found some species of fish yeah. that were quite unusual in this area. Yeah, and yeah. They and seem only yeah. essentially the, right. the white terns have basically located them. Yeah, they're locating them yeah. and then they're bringing them back and hanging them out of right. their mouths so we right. can see what they And the amazing thing is they can apparently have one fish in their mouth and still fish further without losing the first it, one. It's, and they, it's can, amazing. they can stack yeah, they multiple can, fish at times. I think mouth. the record is 16. Some small ones. Right, and those are slippery little things. They're slippery you know? little things. <laughs> and so I was really curious, and I've heard they have ridges in their, in their uh, beaks. And so I, I know a, a researcher from HPU who was, um, had some dead birds that he, that he was going to dissect for his graduate students. And he said, I could come over and look uh -huh. at the uh, inside of the beaks. So we took some pictures of these ridges, and they're almost like teeth. Right. And the tongue is really flexible. It bends. And mm -hmm. so I think the tongue holds the first fish up mm -hmm. against the teeth. They're all ridged backwards. Ridge backwards, so they, and so they can't slide in. forward. Because you can't imagine how right. they can hold for like eight fish and right. still catch yeah, another. Yeah, you think as they open their beak wider, something's going to fall. Yeah. <laughs> and they don't dive. They just sort just, of just grab them just, off the yeah, surface. Or, yeah, they yeah. Just so they, they often actually are found in conjunction with uh, where there, there's larger predatory fish feeding right. below, right? And that's yeah. pushing the little fish up to the surface. Right, yeah. The, the um, fish are Polynesian uh, voyagers. Uh, really loved them, and the, the fishermen like them, white terns as well as some other species, because they all congregate in what they call bird piles, and that's where the big fish are driving small fish to the surface. So the uh, fishermen like them because that's where the tunas and mahi mahi are, right. and the um, navigators like them because the white tern parents don't go more than a hundred miles or so offshore to catch fish to feed their chicks. Mm -hmm. So if a uh, if you're nap trying to find an island and you see a white turn with fish in its beak, you know you're within 100 miles. Yeah, if you have some general idea of which direction yeah, it's it is. Yeah, like a it, really it, big it, it, moment. Yeah. So yeah. everyone's watching the white turns. Excellent, they're, excellent. No, they're, they're, they're the really wonderful voice. birds. Mm -hmm. and they, uh, they were revered by the Hawaiians in the yes. past, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there was some. Uh, historically, there is not much in the Hawaiian legends and, and lore about them, but uh, one of the early birders in Hawaii, I forgot, in the late 1800s, I think, he um, asked people on Ni'ihau if they would kill one, because that's what they did in those days it, for, as a specimen, and they said, oh, no. So no one really knows what, if they nested here, but, but they were here historically. But we're the only island, Oahu's the only island, and Honolulu's the only part of Oahu where they nest now. But mm -hmm. people have a great view of them, huh. so that they're getting really popular. Really, they, that see. is, they're not on the Big Island or no. Molokai or Maui or no. any, they're out in the free. Maybe of offshore, yeah, yeah, maybe offshore, but not in the uh, uh -huh. uh, the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Have a lot. Midway has about fifty thousand uh, individuals, and there's a lot of ironwood trees that were introduced there. In the so Islands. what the uh, hurricane that came through recently and really yeah. hit pretty hard in the Northwest yeah. Hawaiian Islands. That must have changed the ecology there. Is that well, disrupted it, the population? It, yeah, it knocks, them, knocks the chicks down and, and the eggs, rolls the eggs yeah. off, but the females can lay up to six. Mm -hmm. And the, the birds in, uh, in the Northwest chain usually have a peak breeding season in the spring. We have two in the spring and the fall, and our success rate, are meaning the ones here in Honolulu, is, is much higher than other parts of the world. So they have probably have really good fishing mm -hmm. off the city front, and they have those 
those uh, pukas in the trees mm -hmm. to lay their egg. And um, the other theory is that there are not as many predators in the city as in the countryside. Uh, because people, you know, there aren't, aren't feral cats running around in the city as much. And, and people trap rats around the restaurants. Right. So we don't have the kind of predators that probably are more in the real world hmm. or windward. That, that's great. Yeah. Um, I want to move on. I think you, you had oh, another yeah. a photo or two here coming yeah. up. Coming up that just, again, show, yeah. show how beautiful well, they, these animals they, are. They're so beautiful and they're really fun to watch because they're out in the open, mm -hmm. you know, unlike birds in a nest. Right. But also, they, they're nesting in the monkey pod and kukui trees that are outside of people's and eyes and mm -hmm. condos and office buildings. So one woman wrote me that she had watched and photographed uh, parents raise a chick, and she'd made her own picture book of it. And oh. everyone in the office would come in every day and see what was happening. Yeah, so, I've, I've heard of people setting up uh, falcon cams uh -huh. in like New York, where the yes. peregrine falcons have adopted right. uh, yeah. buildings, and they'll suddenly yes, outside of some office of a fiftieth yeah. floor, they'll they'll set up their nest right. and. And then pigeons, people can watch it, right? Know? And yeah, then people set up cameras. And, and, and there's a white turn cam at uh, uh, KCC, Capilani Community oh, College, oh, that um, the students have set up. Oh, wonderful. So, so we can watch it. If you're excellent. lucky, you can see the parent come in and feed the oh, chicks. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. That, that's super, super. And they feed the chicks fish that are almost too big for them. Mm -hmm. So if the chick can't quite get it in its mouth, you know, if it's like hanging this, the parent will hold up the tail. And put it in the mouth, and then the chick just sits there and digests the first half, of, and then wait. And sometimes it takes a couple hours, but it's pretty cute to watch. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I used to uh, keep large constrictors. I would eat things oh. that were much bigger around than they were. Yeah, it's always yeah. impressive to see what they could get in. It, so. it is, and some, how long it takes. Yeah, right. right exactly. And some right. somewhat same same kind of idea. Yeah. Um, so, you uh, how, how long did you work on this book? Well, I. Uh, People, you know, I write a weekly column for the right. Star Advertiser, and, and, and readers would start asking me questions about the white turns, and I, I didn't know the answers. And so I would talk to some people who were doing research, and, and the, the literature was pretty piecemeal. And there's, uh, since the birds are found in the Atlantic and Australia, you know, and around the world in the tropics, there was uh, literature in journals from around the world. So I joined, um, there was a hui that got together and right. said, Okay, well, this is our city bird, and no one's really paying a lot of attention to that. Let's get together and, and get the information out. So this hui is teachers and BLNR, state, federal, and people like me, just all joining together. We have meetings every few months of what we can do to, to help this. And so I joined the hui, and that's when we decided that there was enough literature to probably put a book together so people who love these birds can find some things out and look them up. Excellent. And so, so it took me about a year to do it, and the uh, University of Hawaii Press uh, wonderful, designed wonderful. it and published it. And uh, the royalties to me are going to the Hawaii Audubon Society. We're trying to raise money to buy a satellite tag, probably only one at a time. They cost about $2,500, but they talk to the satellite so you don't have to recapture the bird to get the information. And those are the more expensive ones because. If we can catch an adult in the first place, which is really hard because they're, you know, monk, our monkey pod trees and, and other mature trees are really tall. Right. And even the trimmers can't always get up there. Uh, you'll never catch it the second time. So right. It'll be wise to you. Right. Which I figure you have to you know, lose the tag, put it on, a, on its leg as a, in a biodegradable yeah. manner, and then let it fall off. So. Interesting. And we're going we're gonna to dig more deeply into the white turns here when we come back. I'm okay. told we need to go to a quick break. Susan Scott, author, biologist, adventurer, is here with me in the Think Tank studios. I'm your host, Ethan Allen, and thanks for joining us on Likeable Science. We'll be back in one minute. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that you know may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <laughs> I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Our flagship energy show among the six energy shows we have 
is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It plays every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Come around and see us. Learn about energy. Keep current on energy on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at 5. I'll see you there. And welcome back to Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Uh, thanks for coming back to learn more about white terns. Uh, Susan Scott is here in the, in the uh, studio. Her new book on Hawaii's white terns has just recently come out, and it's a beautiful book. It's a lovely book. It's filled with all sorts of good information, lots of pretty pictures. Uh, tremendous gathering together of, of the knowledge uh, that, that these sort of almost mysterious animals, where bits and pieces have been known from different places, different times, but uh, hadn't really ever been pulled together, and you've done a, done a remarkable job there. Um, we were talking a little bit on the break, uh, this hui you mentioned just before the, the, uh, the break, uh, this gathering of people who are interested in and who want to support these birds. This is sort of, it's, it's almost an orphan project, right? That, that right. Is, it, there is not a lot of big focused attention on it, and this group has come together and tries to bring some attention, raise funds to get these things. You were saying they, they want to get a, a satellite tag, a tag that will beam signals up to a satellite so they can really track more accurately how one of these, how these birds actually where they go and when they go. Right. The, yeah. the Hui has a lot of really interesting people from different walks of life. And one of the great things about it is there's a man named uh, Rich Downs who's retired, but he's pretty much given this a second career of, of monitoring them. And he set up a website called uh, whiteturns.org. And there's lots of information on that about how you can help. And so, so um, he has also started, he's done a lot of work, and mm -hmm. he's done a citizen science group. So people who have a white turn outside their office window or their condo can, can uh, join the citizen science and tell him where it is. And when there's a white turn family in a tree, they're federally and state protected. So it's against the law to cut down that tree or the limbs that, or disturb it. Mm -hmm. And so um, he has gotten from DLNR, is pitched in and made this blue tape that goes around the trunk. So if you see blue tape in the uh, city at the Ilani Palace and the city center, uh, that's where the turns are. Yeah, I was, so. I was just walking uh, really the other day through Waikiki and, and a uh, tree just by one of the condos yeah. there had, had this big blue tape around yeah. it. I wondered what it was for. I saw some writing on it, went up yeah. and looked, and it said it's white turns nesting there and, Ooh, right. and for trimmers to be very careful not to disturb And the them. website's on there, yeah, so right. you can do that. But uh, the phone number on there is a rescue. So mm -hmm. if a bird falls, a chick falls, uh, if you can't get it back safely, yourself, safe, uh, you can call that number and there's a, a team of people who will try to either take it to a rehab rescue center, mm -hmm. bird center, or uh, get it back in the nest. You can okay. put a bird back in the nest and they'll, the parents will feed it. Right. They have no nest, so it would be hard to There's tell where no it fell from. Right? I keep saying nest, and I, I mean breeding site. Which branch right? this bird fall off? Branch. And actually, if you put it on an, even a nearby branch, it'll I, be okay. I, I was going to say, I, I would guess the parents must be sort of flexible. Yeah, they it, are you know. flexible, and as long as it can balance on right. their hatch with really huge feet, yeah. so the chicks hang on, that's no, that, that is adapted. An, an intriguing yeah. uh, piece of their biology, right? Because they, they don't do any nesting. So right. literally, they're, they're on these bare branches. The chicks are, the eggs are yeah. incubated there. The chicks are born there and, right. and somehow must have some very reflexive, instinctive yeah. gripping. They, uh, they do. And yeah. uh, one of the theories, a couple theories of why they've evolved that way is that they don't get uh, nest mites, you know, that are right. in the nesting material. There's no parasites to infect them. And another is that they nested traditionally in cliffs. So they didn't need nesting right. material. Right. They nesting birds nest in holes. Don't, right. don't make much so, but now they're nesting in our trees. Yeah. So, yeah. Or, or our artificial cliffs. Or our artificial or cliffs. Our or, yeah. yeah, they nested in the uh, Hawaii State Art Museum, and there was an $8 million renovation <laughs> planned. And so, you know, when there's a white turn family there, no one messes with it, and they put that off until it's Wedge, so that's kind of <laughs> what must have made the contractors a little edgy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does, but I, on yeah. the other hand, the tree trimmers are into it, so they like the blue tape, so they know there's a, a mm -hmm. nest, a, a family in there to look at, look out for, and not trim that tree. Right. And the tree trimmers have really come on board. That's good, yeah. Because so. they always come back 
yeah. a few months later in Yeah, and they don't want to hurt the birds. Right, they right. just didn't know where they all were. So Rich's blue tape and his, and his citizen science of, uh, I think I have a picture of them um, where he shows them on the website where they all are. Well, that's the, the um, oh, this was where proclamation, they, yeah, oops. and that's the one. So each, each pinpoint is where there's a nest and the different colors are whether there's a chick or a fledging and the age. So he keeps track of that. Huh. You can see it's between yeah. Hawaii Kai and... Uh, yeah, with a nice it's dense nice. area yeah, along nice Waikiki. Area. And, 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 and the university, yeah. I, yeah. I gave a talk at the university on this recently, and there were white terns all over the place. So <laughs> people knew them there. Oh, so that, that that's good. wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, that's great. And so people can get to that website. They can get to the, this hui if they want and, and yes. join a, and become active supporters, become citizen scientists. Yes, and there's been yeah. photo there's fantastic professional photographers who have joined. There's lots of different kinds of people there, and they contributed greatly to the book. So the book has really nice photos. Oh, yeah. And the, oh, the, the uh, yeah, don all donated, which is very nice. And so these birds almost pose, you know, <laughs> and act right. really cute for the pictures, uh, the pictures of feeding the chicks. And then you're actually donating profits from this book to the to Audubon Society, Audubon. right? Yeah. yeah. So this is all, all doing a lot of good for a lot, a lot of good organizations yeah. here. Yeah, and the get-togethers are pretty fun. Too, oh, well, that's, that's nice, yeah. You meet new people from different places. Right, right. because uh, these birds because of their urban adaptation will will right. draw sort of different kinds of people, people right. who just happen to have them outside their office or outside their condo right. or whatever. And teachers are teaching right. yeah, there's a family of white several white turns I think at Elon. Oh, okay. So it must be a, a great it's a great, great, great way to, to engage yeah. engage kids and yeah. all. And it must must have been that the original settlers, the original ones who came and did this were probably abnormally we say not shy, normally right. tolerant right. Of, of disturbances near their nests. Yeah. Because apparently, in, sometimes they'll be doing major construction near, right near these trees and exactly. doesn't seem to bother the birds. No, they'll bother. Still raise, they'll they're, raise. they're not bothered by 24 hour light either because they, huh. they uh, have chicks on top of light poles. Huh. And uh, Rich says there's traffic and commotion and they're in Waikiki, of course, the birds. Right. And they don't care about the light or the traffic or the noise. And so predators are a big thing. So one of the things uh, we can do to help them is to keep track of the right. More, more and more, that's becoming, I think, the trend is to keep, ask people to keep cats indoors. Right. And, and it's actually better for the cats. Do the cats it is better for the cats, and, and yeah, they are definitely predators. Cats are predators. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, and they've, yeah. they've devastated. There are stories, I know, on the Outer Banks of North Carolina of cats bringing in every specimen of a particular species of bird that's ever been found, oh, uh, and right. apparently eliminated the species of yeah, bird off the right. face of the earth. And they also carry toxoplasmosis, right, which right. infects the monk seals. So yes. that's a really big problem that we have now a couple, several hundred monk seals in the main Hawaiian Islands, and they're really worried about the toxoplasmosis monk seal. Yeah, yeah. So it's another big thing. Isn't this, isn't this how we're talking about birds? You go yeah. to yeah, yeah. cats. Yeah. And, well, and it's all seals. connected, it's, right? Right, right. This is this is a nice a nice example it's of how nice nature is all around us, and, and we're exactly. all part of it. We connect to to them, and, and especially here in, on the islands. Yeah. yeah, these small islands are particularly vulnerable. Or right. The connections are usually very close, and they're right. easier to to study because right. it's an island. You know, there's, right. a, there's an edge to it. Right, right. <laughs> they can't, can't go too far. So they probably you say they only fly maybe a hundred miles for food, but then. Do they migrate seasonally at all? Well, that's that a good not, question. Not, no. It's one of the reasons that it would be really nice to get a satellite mm -hmm. tag where, mm -hmm. where uh, you get a healthy adult and see where they go, because mm -hmm. no one knows. Uh, Nainoa Thompson said they go 110 miles. Right. That's the furthest that he's seen them uh, in the voyaging, right. Galea. And uh, researchers think they fly 1,000 miles offshore, but having sailed a lot, that distance offshore, uh -huh. thousands of miles offshore, well, I've never seen a white turn like that. Right. But, so, the fact but they it doesn't mean they're not there. This, this global distribution of the tropics global, does suggest that they're pretty good flyers. Pretty good flyers. They can get they around. Yeah, yeah, they get around. So they're, but they're on offshore islands off in Australia right. and Ascension in um, right. the Atlantic. And so they've gotten there. And the reason they're on mostly only on islands, offshore islands, in those parts of the world is for the predators. Right, right. Yeah, they, they, yeah. Would be very, very vulnerable. Yeah, they're vulnerable yeah. on the. Yeah. And they're not. They're not that big. They're not that that tough a bird, basically, right? right? No, right. Yeah. Exactly. Although they'll attack dogs in the city. Huh. They, they've been seen dive bombing dogs. Yeah. Right. Them. So. 
They, they, they don't have a lot of defense, but they're plucky. Okay, well, know. that's good. That's good. Yeah. They, uh, I got poked in the head. It didn't hurt me, but um, uh, when I was taking a picture of one once, I'm that, that's, that's right. I, I, I recall you had that, that story me. in this book here. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, so, don't want to shoot. Uh, let's see. Did we have another image or two, or was that it? I, Maybe that was, that was it, okay. Yeah, and this was when the Mufi Hanuman oh, made it. The, yeah, um, okay. This was Nainoa Thompson's mother, Laura Thompson, uh, worked with Mufi Hanuman and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Keith Swindle, to uh, make this the city, official city bird. And so that... Yeah, that yeah. 07? That was 07. Yeah. And, of course, it still is, yeah. but um, we're tr trying to make more people aware of that. I think we do have one more image. Okay. I don't think we saw it before. Oh, yes. And that's the, that's the, the home website of the uh, Kui. Oh, okay. Manuel Ku is the, and that's interesting. These birds just, for people who've lived here a long time, are what we used to call fairy terns. Mm -hmm. And I, I called, my original uh, book title was the Tinkerbell of seabirds. And I, I did that because people don't know always that white tern is the same as was fairy turn. Mm -hmm. But there's an international society of uh, ornithologists that name birds, or common name, English common names. Right. And everyone agrees on that. And so they, there's a fairy turn in Australia, right. so ours turn became a white turn. Right. It's, it's a very confusing thing all in biology. It, that it, same it, animal it, the animal called by different names the all, naming, all around. Yeah. Yeah. And I used to think, oh, can, why can't we just call them fairy <laughs> turns? But, but um, we, we don't we, have it that. Be fairy. We don't have that for fish. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't be <laughs> But so where right. you could go as much as I travel, the same fish is called all kinds of different, right. things, different exactly. names, depending on where exactly. you are. So it's kind of nice. Well, thank you so much for being here, Susan. I've learned a lot, as I'm sure our audience has. Again, Susan Scott's new book, Hawaii's White Turn, a lovely book, truly beautiful, truly uh, great, great images, great text, very informative. And uh, this has been an enlightening and fun conversation here. I enjoyed it. Well, thank, you. thank you for coming back. Thank you for having me and letting me um, continue the white turn talk because oh, uh, it's really fun to, to tell people about that. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. I hope you'll come back to, uh, here to Think Tech Hawaii for Likeable Science next week. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. Until then. <laughs>